Russ Cox is stepping down from Go Tech Lead position. Now, if you don't know who Russ Cox is, he is a very, very influential individual if you're a fan of Go or the Go programming language. Russ Cox is a core member and obviously the current tech lead of Go. He's been the current tech lead for 12 years. But before we go into the details of Russ, the main thing I want to showcase is just look at his personal portfolio page. I mean, there's not a lick of CSS in here. It is just straight good HTML baby, a what's gray, a melted penguin. So this is the kind of individual we are dealing with. Make sure you click subscribe button. It does help the channel a lot. A lot of effort goes into these videos and it truly is the best way to support if you enjoy. But let's get back to the video. But here you can see this is his GitHub profile, almost 10,000 followers. You can see the pin projects that he works on. The one that we care about is obviously Golink slash Go, but there's so many good, you know, contributions that this individual makes. And if you look at the uh, Go public repository, you can see here that Russ is the number one contributor with 7,423, you know, 3,000 more commits than Robert. So you can see here there, you know, he has done a lot of great work for Go. You may have seen a lot of his contributions. He's very active in the actual project of Golang. He's very active in issues, pull requests, merging changes, merging releases, all of that. And he's even active in going into other projects that gain a lot of momentum like this one, the Golang standards project layout with almost 50,000 stars. And he very famously went on to an issue to basically say like, this is not an official standard to write Golang projects. This is just a suggestion on how to do so. So he's very active in the Go ecosystem. And so the history of Go is he wasn't one of the two main founding members, but he joined the team very early on. And this is a very interesting snippet right here from Wikipedia from the official Go programming language page. The Evaluation got a rebuttal from the Go development team. Ian Lance Taylor, who had improved the Go code for Hunt's paper, had not been aware of the intention to publish his code and says that his version was never intended to be an example of idiomatic or efficient Go. Russ Cox then optimized the Go code as well as the C++ code and got the Go code to run almost as fast as the C++ version and more than an order of magnitude faster than code in the paper. So one of Russ's earliest kind of main contributions is actually running and creating the Go compiler and being one of the main contributors to the compiler. And you can see here, making Go run almost as fast as C++ is pretty significant and pretty amazing. Very impressive. So this leads us to a email he wrote uh, 13 days ago at the time of this recording, basically stating, Hi all, starting September 1st, Austin Clements will be taking over as the tech lead of Go both the Go team at Google and the overall Go project. Austin is currently the tech lead for what we sometimes call the Go core, which encompasses compiler, toolchain, runtime, and releases. Cherry Mu will be stepping up to lead those areas. So if I'm mispronouncing any names, I'm not leaving the Go project, but I think the time is right for a change, which is pretty incredible. It just goes to show that, you know, he is not leaving Go. He's not stopping all contributions to the Go programming language. I know a lot of people have that kind of similar, you know, quote unquote complaint, if you will, with kind of Rob Pike's contributions, just because Rob Pike hasn't really committed or been active in Go for a very, very long time, but he is still one of the faces of the programming language. So he goes on to give a pretty good description of tech lead. I'm going to read this quick paragraph here. It's important to remember that tech lead, like any position of leadership is a service role, not an honorary title. I've been leading the Go project for over 12 years, serving all of you and trying to create the right conditions for all of you to do your best work. Large projects like Go absolutely benefit from stable leadership, but they can also benefit from leadership changes. New leaders bring new strengths and fresh perspectives. For Go, I think 12 plus years of one leader is enough stability. It's time for someone new to serve in this role. In particular, I don't believe that the BDFL, benevolent dictator for life model is healthy for a person or a project. It doesn't create space for new leaders. It's a single point of failure. It doesn't give the project room to grow. I think Python benefited greatly from Guido stepping down in 2018 and letting other people lead. And I've had in the back of my mind for many years that we should have a Go leadership change eventually. So my thoughts on that post is that you can clearly see Russ cares about Go and he cares about the Go ecosystem. I think it's going to be kind of funny because he is stepping down as his role as tech lead, but he still wants to be a contributor and maybe an advisor. But I want to see how that dynamic changes 
with the new tech lead Austin and kind of what Russ discussed in his post, the leadership and ideas that he can bring. I really like that Russ used Python as an example and just overall how changing the handle, passing that torch can be something daunting for some people could feel like maybe you're not good enough, maybe you don't have it anymore, but that's a very selfish perspective. I think Russ really wants to keep Go relevant, keep Go alive and keep improving Go. And I think that, as he said, serving as tech lead for 12 years, imagine at the company you currently work at or doing what you've done for 12 years. The same thing, trying to lead it, trying to make it better. I think it makes sense that you have someone who is gonna bring a new perspective to the programming language. And it's not like you're going anywhere, you're gonna be on an advisory role. So I'm excited. I think this is gonna be very healthy. I'm excited to see what changes and go and what this brings to go moving forward. So this change doesn't come into effect until September 1st. And I'm very curious to see what happens post September. I don't think there's gonna be immediate changes like right off the bat, but I am, very curious and very keen to see what future releases post Go 123, so 124 and four and so forth, bring to the table in terms of, you know, what direction the Go programming language is going in. But let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know what you think of Russ's post. It's gonna be a link in the description, but let me know. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe for more Go content. And as always, have a good one. Peace.